Yeah, those are nice. I can be the sheep as well. Yeah. See how I want money now. Yeah. 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 They are going to follow on after later that. After you finish, but they yeah. may want to know about the Vietnam thing and they want to put Calvin in the back. Yes. Home network's on there within two or three minutes. So yes, we're going to make a start. Yeah. Okay, looks like you've opened a new line to Hanoi. Are you confident that you'll be able to send an envoy to Hanoi to discuss the Vietnam situation? No, that hasn't been raised with them. Lord Chalfont, the Minister of State at the Foreign Office, Minister of Disarmament, uh, spent over four hours with the uh, North Vietnamese Chargé d'Affaires in Moscow. And this enabled us to put a lot of questions to them, elucidation of points that they'd uh, made in messages to us, uh, and to state our position to them. And I have no doubt this is being fully reported in Hanoi. But uh, you were hoping, weren't you, to, to send an envoy to Hanoi at one stage? Well, we don't uh, recognize them diplomatically. There is, of course, a Consul General there, but he's not normally allowed to deal with uh, political and international matters. Uh, we did want to get the Commonwealth Peace Mission there last year, but of course they refused to receive us then. Do you think this reopening of lines with Hanoi is the uh, prime achievement of your visit to Russia? No, this was a useful incidental part. No, the prime achievement, I think, is that we have now established first-class relations with the Soviet government. There been many years when contacts have been a bit thin, uh, and rather formal, and we've had tremendous talks, really, very frank, very hard-hitting, very tough. We've each expressed to another our views on the outstanding issues, Vietnam, disarmament, trade, many other questions, and we've established a real contact. Both of us felt, the um, Soviet leaders and we, that it, it, it's a beginning, it's not a once-for-all effort, and we're going to intensify the contacts from now on. Changing the subject slightly, a lot of people here were confidently predicting that Gerald Brooke would be released as a result of your visit. Um, did you think this? Well, one doesn't know at any moment of time what might happen. I raised the matter, of course, with uh, the Soviet Prime Minister. Uh, it was then discussed uh, through official channels, and their answer was, in terms of releasing him, possibly in return for two spies in this country, with very long prison sentences, obviously we couldn't agree to this. It might create very dangerous precedents, perhaps dangerous for future tourists to the Soviet Union. Mm. Ghana, um, while you were in Moscow, in fact, today, there's mm. been a revolution in Ghana. Have you any comment to make about it? No, I haven't had any full reports. Uh, there are telegrams waiting for me at 10 Downing Street. I heard the flash news when I was in Moscow, briefly discussed it with Mr. Kasig, and he had heard it too, of course. Mm. And now the inevitable election question. Mm. Will you be making an announcement in the next few days? On well, the I've been far too busy the last uh, three or four days to be going into these questions, so I've kept in touch with what's being said about this and other matters in the British press. I said last week on BBC television that I would make a statement in the right way and at the right time, and that still stands. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Fine. Thank you so very much indeed. If you unlace Sean, sure, there's some more mics. Yeah, we'll go ahead now. Oh, yeah. Go ahead.